Hey, welcome back. Annette here. I haven't been here for a while, but I'm back today. So I hope everybody's been hooking and knitting and doing whatever you do. I've been dyeing yarn and I've been having a great time doing it. So I got a whole bunch of it. I'm going to show it to you. And um, yeah, so just grab up a cup of tea or coffee or something hot or cold, depending on where you are. If you're watching this from another country, I would absolutely love for you to just drop a comment saying, hey, I'm from, you know, Thailand. I'm from England. I'm from London. Um, just so I, it's just to me, it is really, really amazing that women and men and anybody who crafts um, is able to share uh, their knowledge, their, what they're doing, just uh, their excitement for the craft, their passion for it with people from all over the world that we would never have an opportunity to connect with so I just I'm just kind of celebrating that today I just think that's really cool that we could all share in what we know and um, see how other people do their craft because it's sometimes dramatically different because of the tools they have and the materials that are available to them and I'm always amazed at uh, what other people are working with and um, so it inspires me to try something different, kind of get out of my whole uh, comfort zone thing, which I gotta be honest, they call it a comfort zone because you're happy there. And, and I like being in my comfort zone, but I think it's so much fun to see what other people are doing. Um, so go ahead, get a cup of coffee and I got my green tea. It's super hot, so I won't be drinking it right now. So, okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Annette. I, I'm a, a love of rug hooking and I never really took up knitting, um, but have been exposed to that whole loom knitting thing. And um, from the YouTube tutorials, I've been able to just learn so much. And um, I have a great new passion for knitting with my looms. Uh, so I'm just gonna briefly show you some of them right now just to quickly acclimate you. Those of you who are loom knitters know these, these are our looms that we use. Um, this is from Cindy Woodcraft, cindywoodlooms.com. This is a fine gauge loom. This is her latest loom. It's a 90 peg loom and it produces a much finer gauge. So if you could see, this is another experiment. Um, I did my first experiment, let me grab that. Um, on a regular gauge loom, which is a 5 eighths inch, which kind of looks thick pegs, and they're 5 eighths apart, 5 eighths inch apart, so this is 24 pegs. They also have a, a 30 peg, and these are half inch apart. And though these, they all produce something a little differently depending on the yarn you use, and I'll show you what I've done with those over the last uh, two weeks. But this was that first experiment. I'm working on creating a, sh a like a little scarfette shawlette. Um, and this was just um, a sample to see how it would knit up um, using a certain, uh, I was doing the garter stitch and I just kind of wanted to see um, what it would look like. Um, so I'm, I'm experimenting and that's the same yarn as this, but this is becoming a much tighter gauge as you could say. And basically all I did was start out with probably one stitch, then I added two, and then from that I built on, I did four rows of that, and then added, um, increased, sorry, I'm not using the correct uh, knitting terminology, but I just kept increasing every four rows. So I think I still have to tweak it. I think I probably should have done maybe, instead of just two or three or four rows, maybe done six rows so that the increase um, is a little bit more gradual and this is a little bit more um, tapered and kind of less width up here longer because that's what I want. I want one that I can wrap around um, and leave the little, you know, your little hanging. This is worsted weight, so I'll be looking at fingering um, to work the next one with and that should be the one. So I just wanted to quickly show those of you who knit, um, whether it's loom knitting or any kind of loom, I made this little yarn holder, and as you can see, it's just a pretzel bin that um, is empty. On the bottom, I have some a bag of beans in um, a Ziploc. Um, so, you know what, if I did ever need them to use them, they're in there. 
but clearly um, it's it's in for here now. And I just dropped my um, ball. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, not all of us, you know, yarn doesn't all come in balls. Little hole in the front, two different ones, depending on, you know, just what I'm into doing. And uh, that's basically it. It holds it, it weighted, it weights down. You can put it on your desk. I have it on the floor right here. So my little ball isn't like flying all over the place. I did buy a ball winder. Um, I, it's attached to my table, excuse me. Okay. But I bought that, okay. And I got it off of Amazon, I don't know, $15. And I bought it with a Yarn Swift those big wooden things that spin. So, um, cause I've been dyeing yarn and I wanted to put it back into a ball, but sometimes from the ball, I need to put it into um, like a wide hank um, so I can dye it and something that would look like that. So I take it from a ball and put it into this. And then from this, it goes back into a ball. So uh, depending on how it comes, sometimes you can buy yarn and it's already uh, hanked up in a skein like that. So um, then I don't have to do it. Um, so, okay, so I showed you this that I'm working on. And um, let me, sh I'll show you some stuff that I'm working on, then I'll get to the wool, wool for rug hooking and uh, yarn for rug hooking and yarn for um, what I'm working on, dyeing some stuff. So I'm just showing you what's on my loom. Um, I'm going to be starting a new podcast and it's going to be called um, My Loom Knitting talk show or my knitting loom talk show. I'm not sure which one it's going to be, but um, it's for those of us who do loom knitting that might not want to sit and listen to this on my rug hooking uh, podcast show. So um, anyway, this is what's on this and I'm just doing squares. Um, this is just a Bernat softy chunky. It's for my granddaughter and I'll quickly show you. So far I've got a lot of them done. Um, so I've got all the pink ones done, and now I'm working on the pretty variegated pinky ones. And they'll be put in a patchwork, you know, re pink, variegated, pink, variegated. Um, there'll be 20 squa squares. Um, I've already got all the 10 of the pink ones done. I think I've shared that before. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. And um, so yeah, so I'm working, I have one of those on here. So that's one of them. Okay, one of my projects that I'm working on. The second one is this. And I just completed using these two looms, my glove looms, I call them, um, some fingerless gloves. And they have this cool color green in it. It's just a band. And let's see if I can bring them back here. Try to bring them back here by the light. Okay. So there you go. So I have those. This is a dark green called Prying Mantis from Willow um, Deli. And um, there it's a deli uh, worsted weight. It's a super wash. Awesome, awesome, $5.99 from Willow. It is wonderful. Um, so I did do another pair and it has this cool dyed yarn in it. Let's see if I could show you. There you go. Um, a very simple pattern I made up um, for my fingerless gloves. Um, it goes very quickly. It has a nice thick cuff. If anybody's interested in the pattern, just um, send me a comment and I'll put it on there. And so those are my two gloves. They, they're done in a day. And that's using Worsted weight yarn. Okay, so these are my Willow Dailies. These are what I use to dye my knitting yarn with now. Um, and this is worsted. These are all worsted. The next one down is DK, and I think I'm going to give that a try to do my shawl. So I'll be ordering some of that and dyeing some of that up. And so I have all these different colors. Let me grab another one. And this is like a off white, too. Um, ivory-ish color, I think. Let's see. It's a worsted super wash, and the color is ice. And these are great for my dyeing um, because 
their uh, superwash wool tends to take that dye really well for some reason. And so I've also been, let me go over here. I've also been just um, learning about hand dyeing. I bought this book off of Amazon, um, pretty inexpensive. I mean, it's an old ex-library book. I think I got it for $5, so I'm happy. It's got really good information on dyeing, the, the whole overview, and then, um, which you can see great you, to, uh, tutorials on YouTube also. But um, it has some really good ideas um, for dyeing and making some cool variegated yarns in different colors. And so that's been inspiring me. And uh, that brings me to showing you this, which I showed you in a very early episode um, when I started, uh, when I first started the podcast, I would show um, my rug hooking yarn stash. And um, this is from that. This was, I did not dye this. This was purchased from somebody who, um, I don't think she's dying anymore. And uh, so, but you can get variegated yarns. Um, through Violet Jane, who uh, I think of Amy Oxford is uh, owns that now. But anyway, and Seal Harbor Rug. So this is for rug hooking. And um, I just wanted to share this with you because you could also buy white yarn or undyed yarn through Seal Harbor. I think it's six fifty a ball, 65 yards. And you can turn this into this very easily. I mean, like I said, I've been dying with Kool-Aid and I've been dying with the Wilton um, icing colors and they're all set with um, um, vinegar and they're all color fast and they're all rinsed and there's no running uh, of bleeding of colors. Um, so just so you know, this is what rug hooking yarn, the thickness, it's very coarse. Like some people say, well, can I just use bulky? You could use bulky and I have used non rug yarn and um, the rug is still standing, but it's a rug, uh, it's in perfect condition, um, but it's not a rug that has been walked on. So I would not suggest putting this yarn in a rug where you're going to have any kind of traffic on it whatsoever, or you will ruin it. I mean, that's all there is to it. Rug yarn is a very dense, thick yarn. It's coarse, um, and it's, it's, it's meant to be coarse so that it's just, it stays in the burlap or your linen very well. And it just, it's not slippery, so those loops don't pull out very easily. Um, but this is, um, I believe this one is Seal Harbor, and it is awesome. It is just thick and coarse, and um, but not, not uncomfortable to work with. What I mean is just compared to knitting yarn. It, it's so much stronger. You know that when you make a rug with this, it's going to last forever, um, I'm sure. So, but my point is, I've gotten so excited about dyeing yarn um, and that it, it kind of renewed my interest in hooking rugs with yarn because now we have options you know I think before it was just solid yarn that we looked at with our rugs and we saw that how hooking with our rugs with wool fabric with um, uh, patterns on it and variegations and plaids and over dyed colors and all this like that we were very limited if we were hooking our rugs with yarn. Um, but as we started to evolve with our dyeing techniques with, um, with wool in general, it, it transcended over into also yarn. So why not um, get into yarn? I mean, I just, I love yarn. So that's, you know, one of my things. I just love it. It's easily dyed. Um, are there any mistakes? I mean, I guess if you're shooting for a very particular color, but to me, there are no mistakes. I, I love the kind of happenstance of whatever comes out of the dye pot. I like that. I, I kind of like not knowing exactly what's coming out. Um, because you could, you can buy dyed yarn solid color anywhere. So, um, you know, and there's a great, great supply at Seal Harbor. They have over 200 colors. But my point is, is that it's so much fun. And, um, you know, for flowers, trees, um, even if you're into geometrics, you know, you, we can get some crazy colors if we dye them ourselves and get such interest in our rugs by um, even adding two or three colors from the rug into one rug to maybe, I mean, into one piece of uh, yarn to, to kind of balance the whole uh, 
look of the rug out with um, that kind of dyed yarn with all the colors in it that are in the rug. So anyway, I have some, um, I have been dying, so I just wanted to share some of the colors. I'm trying to see if there's a way I could do this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use this just to show you kind of what it looks like against there. And I'm trying to see if I can pull it back. Let's see. Does that help at all? There you go. So these are just like a red, jewelly, dark tones, as you can see. Um, they're just really pretty. Okay, that's one. These were um, a blue, pinky uh, tone that I used. And like I said, um, most of these colors were from the Wilton gel, but um, some of them were writ dyed. And writ is fine for wool, it's color fast, and for cotton. Um, so I've used all different. Here's a green. This green is really very pretty. It's a little, um, it's just, I just wanted a two-tone. There's a little yellow in this green. Um, as opposed to um, this green, which has a lot of yellow in it in different colors. So there you go. That's what that one So, I did um, little tiny skeins. You're probably wondering, like, why did she do such tiny amounts? Why did she do tiny? Because this is what I use for that, to add just a little splash of color to the rug, up to my rug. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mixing the two, to my gloves. If you just want a little strip, that's what I've been doing. I was like, well, wouldn't it be cool? And then I can really dye my brains out um, by just uh, doing any little colors that I want. Um, I guess I've got like yarn dyeing ADD where I have to keep changing colors. <laughs> um, it's fun. It, it is just so much fun. This is a blue and a red that I decided to do, like an aqua blue and a red. Let's see if I can hold it back here so you can kind of see it. Um, and that was one of my favorites. Um, and this is, um, I love like light blue, aqua blue. I'm kind of drawn to that color and I just wanted to kind of temper it with gray because I'm going to be doing it in a black glove and a dark gray glove. And I thought that would be really pretty. So this is just, you know, all the fun you can have in your kitchen without really messing up because any way it comes out is is okay it's okay and my last one is a rust color I was shooting for pumpkin um, like a terracotta pumpkin I guess I got it um, you know I, I think I was shooting for something a little darker I probably should have added a little bit more brown um, but this is the fun this is the fun that you get um, when you die, you just don't know what is coming out. So there you go. Okay. So these are all for knitting. Okay. Um, and they were quick and easy and fun. I used food colorings too. I had everything out in the kitchen, just laid out a lot of newspaper, um, to protect your counter, but bleach will normally clean it all off of you. I used gloves cause my hands were blue and I had to go out and it wasn't really cool. I had a, I bleached my fingers and it all came out. But so that's the worsted weight willow wash, $5.99, a skein, a ball, whatever you want to call it. Um, awesome, 218 yards. And it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful yarn. It's not a very heavy worsted. I would probably say it's maybe a tad to the lighter side of a worsted weight. Um, but um, I'm fine. I like working with it. And like I said, it, it adds a little dynamic to a solid color. Um, and so that brings me to doing it for our rugs. You could do any of this dyeing for our rugs. You could use Kool-Aid, 25 cents a pack. You can use the food colorings right now in your pantry. Your, your basic three colors will make every color um, of the rainbow, so long as you know how to mix them. And RIT actually has um, a, a web page to dye their colors too. So if you want certain color tones 
uh, they'll give you the formula. And I used a RIT liquid. It's a lot easier, a little bit more expensive, but it's, it's all mixed up. The powders are nice for speckling. Um, I haven't gotten into the speckling yet, but that's how you do that. You do that with the powder mixes. Um, and so there you go. That's a lot of easy stuff for dyeing that you can do to just try it. You don't have to invest in a lot of money. You don't have to invest into acid dyes. I do have them. They're not expensive, but you know, you do want to wear the mask with those um, as opposed to the food coloring and that stuff. It's, it's all non-toxic and you don't need to separate your utensils. You can just put them in the back into the, the kitchen supply and the drawers and, and not feel compromised safety wise or health wise. So, um, that's why I've been trying to do that with the natural dyes. Now, I've also dyed with onion skins. You get a really nice yellow color. You get a cool pink color if you use the red onion skins. The red onions, they have like a pinky, dark magenta cover. You can use those. Um, you can mix the two and you can get an orange. And you can dye with a lot of your herbal teas, like your lemon zinger, your orange zinger. Um, your red zinger, apple cinnamon, they have all these colors that are, they have natural derived um, food dyes in them that you, you, you can ingest them. It, they're not artificial like food coloring ones. Um, so I think they're a little uh, kinder and gentler, but um, I mean clearly none of them are, I think will be harmful. But it's just fun to see what you can dye with and you can get a great brown from a uh, walnut shells. You could dye your walnut shells and um, put them in a straining bag or nylon tool or something, and um, yeah, let them sit overnight. And you, they draw out the dye. You could heat it up a little, but black tea will give you an interesting color. So um, it's just trial and error and see what you like. Um, and those black tea dyes are good. Like if if you want to tone down a bright color. Um, even after you've dyed it. I mean, you just, you can't miss uh, with dyeing. It, it, nothing bad um, or wasteful, I think, could happen with your yarn. You can just over dye it again. So it's all good. Um, and I have been knitting, uh, knitting. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to the knitting. I'll tell you right now, it's rough. But um, I've been at, still going at my rug and not as much, not as much as I, could have, like I said, I've been doing other things. And this was a very big weekend. We had lots of things, prom and um, parties, retirement parties. So this was a full weekend. But I did go to, um, I did go to the, the American Museum of Natural History to the planetarium. And they also have a beautiful butterfly conservatory there and uh, a live butterfly uh, interactive exhibit so you can go in there but they had all the blue butterflies um, that I put in my rug they had them um, on exhibit and my gosh there are so many blue butterflies there had to be at least 15 species of blue butterflies which I didn't know and um, yeah it was amazing to see them all uh, but they didn't have but one they had one at the exhibit but anyway, I'm digressing again, walking away from my knitting and my rug hooking here. So anyway, I had a thing for butterflies, and I just love the blue one all the time. But so no, we're still working on it. We are still working on it. And I think this will probably be, oh gosh, my last big rug for quite a while. Um, I'm not sure what's coming up next with that, but um, I always said I wanted to do a holiday rug, so that might be in the mix. Um, let's see if I ever finish this. Um, but we're, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. It's, it's tough. I've gotten bitten by the knitting uh, bug and my rug hooking has definitely taken a little back seat. Um, I had one more color to show you and I didn't show you. It was the one that I used in, um, in these and it's because I used most of it up, but it, uh, it, it was just such a beautiful colored yarn that I loved it and I put it right away in um, I put it right away into a into the gloves and so I just wanted to share you know as you can see it's a small amount I didn't make a lot of it 
And so what's nice is that you can make these little hand-painted snippets of yarn. I mean, even for those of you who love the socks, I see everybody's knitting socks on all these um, knitting podcasts. And why not use um, a small little, make a mini skein of variegated yarn uh, for your socks. If you like solid socks in general, I do. I don't really like those variegated ones. All, but wouldn't that be cool to put like a band of color here, maybe on the toe or the heel, um, where it doesn't kind of show so much and that you can enjoy it and know it's there, but it's not showing through your pants. But anyway, that's just saying. Um, so there you go. And uh, so yes, that was that's what I've been working on. And um, I'm grateful that you're still watching. Um, when the new podcast comes out, I will definitely let you know. But I am working more towards my loom knitting now and phasing out the rug hooking. Um, but I will always keep you connected with whatever I'm working on in whatever podcast you're watching of mine. Um, so I just want to say thanks for joining me. And um, I'm glad, like I said, leave a comment of what country you're from or even what state you're from. Uh, it's always interesting to see who's watching. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll keep connecting through all this love of yarn and passion for creating and dyeing and just knitting. It's just all good because I love my yarn. And I can't do squishy face with this because it's a little rough, but you get it. Okay. See ya. Happy hooking.